Hey, Pokemon Masters, Birdkeeper Toby here. In the story of the evolution of Pokemon life, there are some environments that are particularly harsh and life finds it difficult to survive and the snowy mountain peaks of Sinnoh, well, they're no exception. That said, harsh environments often tend to breed more extreme variants of life. So let's see how they would fit onto our phylogenetic tree. Did you wrap up warm? Let's take a look at the Sinnoh region. Now, the cool thing about the Sinnoh region is that there's lots of final evolutions of Pokemon that previously didn't have final evolutions. Take, for example, the two that I'm about to bring up. Magmortar and Electivire, evolutions of Magmar and Electabuzz, respectively. Now, these Pokemon are very bizarre when it comes to their designs. What are they? Magmortar has traits of a duck and a lizard. Electivire could be a big cat or a great ape. We just don't know. Let me know your guesses in the comments, and we'll reveal the truth pretty soon. Starting with the lower forms of life, there is just one mollusk, Gastrodon. This Pokemon takes on different forms depending on where you find them, whether you find them in the east or the west. So I wonder what would happen if you find one directly in the middle of the Sinnoh region, and not in the east or the west. We also know that Gastrodon changes its form depending on whether it's the east or the west of whichever region you find it in. But we know not all of the Pokemon regions are sitting on a straight line, so whether these are actually east and west forms is kind of undetermined. Now onto the creepy crawlies that are the arthropods, and many of the Pokemon on this list are related to pre-existing Pokemon. Vespiquen of course is lightly related to Beedrill, being based off of a queen bee. Cricketot is a cricket and closely related to Scizor, and Mothim and Warmadam are based on the Bagworm, just like Fortress. Drapion is not related to any of the already existing Pokemon on this list, but as we said before, is very lightly related to Gliscor. Not only do they look very similar and both come from the same region, Region, Gliscor also has the poison heal ability, linking it further to Drapion. As well as that, at least Drapion is an arachnid based off a scorpion, and Gliscor has a scorpion like tail. Heck, it's even Skor. Gliscor. Gliscorpion. A gliding scorpion. Now, a further monstrous bug comes in the form of Yang Mega, which likely existed more commonly in ancient times, and nowadays only tends to exist in the pre evolved form known as Yanma. In order to evolve this Pokemon, it needs the right learn set, one that includes ancient power. This is the signature move of fossil Pokemon and tells us that Yang Mega likely existed more commonly in the ancient past. There are actually several. Several Pokemon like this that fit this trend, Tangrowth and Mamoswine, which are exactly the same. We won't talk about Tangrowth today, and Mamoswine will be later a little bit later on. But it does show that the giant Great White North Sinnoh region was also home to lots of giant and great big Pokemon. Moving up the tree, we have yet another bony fish in Luminion, and another shark, that being Garchomp. Oh, that's right. Garchomp did not truly evolve with the other dragons. No, instead it is the land shark Pokemon. That is the classification of its baby stage, Gibble, and additionally, both it and Sharpedo have the rough skin ability. They have the same color scheme and head star, and even the shiny form of Sharpedo matches the shiny form of Mega Garchomp. So, much like how Flygon is a dragon-like bug, Garchomp is a dragon-like shark. Checking in with the amphibians before we move on to the real reptiles, though, there is just one. Toxicroak, who of course resembles the real poison dart frog. A frog that secretes deadly toxins, so uh, don't touch. In the family of Reptilia, we see Licky Licky, who is at our best guest, a lizard. Especially looking at its tongue, it might be similarly related to a chameleon. Perhaps connected to Kecleon in some way. Torterra is of course a tortoise, and Rampalos and Bastion are both resurrected ancient Pokemon sharing connection with the living dinosaurs of today. With Rampalos, it's easy to see how it may be an ancestor to modern day's Tyranitar, and with Bastiodon, it's even clearer how it may be related to modern day Agron. And the pre-evolutions of these Pokemon, Aron and Shieldon, not only look very similar and share very similar typings, but the theory goes that they lived in similar areas, they both have the same sturdy ability, and while Shieldon used to eat berries, Aron eats metal, showing the dietary change of this Pokemon as Steel became Aron's primary type. Of course, these dino-like Pokemon are the true ancestors of many of the Monday birds as well, of which we have three here. Staraptor, Chatot, and Empoleon. And Polion is an emperor penguin, which means it's related to Delibird too. I also want to place Magmortar in with the birds. While certainly it has lizard-like traits in Magmar, the form of its arms can be seen kind of like wings with feathers. Its mouth is a beak, and its feet and legs strongly resemble that of a bird's. It would seem most likely to be a type of duck. Man, between Magmortar and Ludicolo, the ducks of this world are uh, well, just a little bit odd. In the world of mammals, we have rodents, our first clear rabbit, which is Lapunny, the bunny. The barrel is a beaver, and Pachirisu joins the electric rodent Pokemon. A rhino Pokemon in Rhyperia, who shares a lot in common with Nidoking and Nidoqueen, and Hippowdon is that hippo Pokemon that I mentioned before. An aquatic mammal, which is likely the closest animal related to Cetaceans, like Whale Lord. 
That's right, in the Tree of Life, Whale Lord and Hippowdon are cousins. The final giant mammal I want to talk about is the mammoth Pokemon, Mammoth Swine. And again, because of the ancient power evolution method, it seems that this Pokemon only became Mammoth Swine more in ancient times. However, you can see in modern times how it'd be closely related to Donphan. There is a Pokemon theory that suggests that the reason that Pillar Swine's home is the icy cave in Johto, and that the only way it can become a Mammoth Swine is traveling further north to the colder of Sinnoh, is because of a climate change after the last great ice age, which is referenced in Mammoth Swine's Pokedex entries. Down south, where Swine Number originally came from, they can only really survive in the icy path. And it's only by moving through the icy path and beyond Blackthorn City that they could begin to thrive outside in the form that became Fampy, and thus Donphan. And that makes sense, because elephants are related to mammoths. Now, let's take a look at Carnivora. Amongst them are weasels and skunks that can be seen in Floatzel, Weavile, and Skuntank, the only skunk Pokemon. Lucario is a jackal, a type of dog, and Perugly, as well as Luxray, are cats. Glaceon and Leafeon join their evolutionary brethren in the dog-cat-fox hybrid Pokemon. And cats is also where I want to put Electivire. Maybe it's just personal opinion, but to me, Electivire and its pre-evolution Electabuzz are very reminiscent of Sabertooth cats, with stripes like a tiger. This can be very well seen illustrated in Characterize Field Notes, just like Magmar being a duck. But maybe your opinions differ here. I have seen some posts online suggesting that Electivire is some kind of great ape. Speaking of which, Ambipom and Infernape are monkeys. Even though Infernape is called an ape, it's not because it has a tail, so it's actually a monkey. Ambipom has two tails though, so I guess it's twice the monkey that Infernape ever was? But now we pull back and we see the Pokemon of Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, and Sinnoh all on one big tree of life. You'll notice that there are some Pokemon missing and they'll have to be covered once we've investigated the other regions of the Pokemon world. So yeah, the Sinnoh region has some pretty harsh environments, meaning there's less Pokemon around, but in the next part, we're going to be exploring the Unova region, where they introduced the most new Pokemon. And Generation 5 was kind of a soft reboot for Pokemon, so not only did they introduce loads of new Pokemon, many of them look very similar to older Pokemon, meaning they're most likely related. You'll have to engage with me in the comments and let me know your thoughts about what's going to be connected, and as always, so high Pokemon Masters.